so i've not forgotten i said 50 likes on that picture but you guys because you want to see the inner part of giants that you don't know another reason why people migrate to ghana to study in university is the fact that there are no strikes or delay compared to nigeria where if a course is supposed to be four years sometimes you end up spending six years and in case you don't know do you know that when obama was still the president of the united states he went to ghana the Obama ever stepped in Nigeria? The competition is fierce. So if you see a Nigerian who comes to Ghana, is that the Nigerian does not have the money or the means. Frankly, the Nigerian just could not pass jump or pass the post jump in order to gain admission into university in Nigeria. Another reason why people move to Ghana to study is that the security in Ghana is good. So as a Nigerian or as a world, you know the answer to that. I haven't heard from the horse's mouth, right? A horse that has a large mouth to bully other people. See, you see this series, it's going to be hard. It's going to be different from what you know me for. So, but allow me to put up that personal because if you don't do like that. Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. That's if you're not new, but if you're new, hi there. My name is Lillian and in today's video, I'm still on Nigeria. I already made a promise. I'm going to make videos on the public secondary schools in nigeria right i'm on it okay i'm working on it so i've not forgotten i said 50 likes on that picture but you guys because you want to see the inner part of giants that you don't know you have given me close to four or five hundred likes on that picture and that means more videos right but before we get to that let's take a look at this because i recently posted a video and in that video there's a nigerian who talked to about why people are coming to school in Ghana, underrated the system in Ghana, talked down on the system, or oh, that a Nigerian only goes to Ghana to study there if the Nigerian does not have enough resources to go to Canada or fail jam back at home. You know, she said all sort of, she talked down on the system of education in Ghana and that the one in Nigeria is way better. And because I told you guys I'm on Nigeria, right? The spotlight is on Nigeria. So anything that concerns Nigeria, Nigeria, both Nigerians, everything. I will bring it here. So, because I want to promote my country, let me play some clip from her claims and then we will go on to see what other Nigerians have to say about that. Let's go. Uh, Ghanaians don't watch them. They have been threatened by the so called most peaceful country. You have to write different entrance exams for every educational milestone. She did not understand, so I went for that to explain. For primary school, common entrance examination. To junior secondary school, junior WAIC. To senior secondary school, senior WAIC plus JAMB UME. To university post UME to be admitted. All these are outside the internal exams written in each school. Then she asked, why can't WAIC take you straight into the university? Because that's what they use in Ghana. What happens if you don't get admitted? mission after passing jam can you use the same results to reapply because i told her i never failed jam i just didn't get admitted on time so i told her we have to wait another year to reapply and write again and next reply i cannot survive in such country me on the other hand was shocked by a revelation too and i said now when you hear nigerians are doing well academically abroad now we both know why and that is just the honest truth you understand like people are filtered here and only the best and strongest survive it is a fierce competition don't forget that the majority of the nigerian population is young so millions every year are trying to get into these tertiary institutions and unis college of educations and all of this the competition is fierce so if you see a nigerian who comes to ghana is that the nigerian does not have the money or the means to travel outside the continent to school. Frankly, the Nigerian just could not pass jump or pass the post jump in order to gain admission into university in Nigeria. So you just look at it and you're like, okay, instead of me to just stay at home, if there is a place where all I need is my WAEC to gain admission, I don't need to write jump or post jump, maybe I should just go there, especially if I can't afford to travel outside. And of course, she will take it. Even though most Nigerians will still try write jump and post jump again and again, some have been writing their jump and post jump for the past four years. They rather try 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 to get an admission in a nigerian university than actually results to even going to another african country like ghana for example to go and school that is the honest truth 
but if you do see a nigerian in ghana coming to school that's one of the reasons it's only in very rare cases that it is not one of these two reasons it's the only reason why nigerian would, would resort to going to ghana to school that is just the truth you think that nigerian employers or maybe even universities you want to apply to maybe for, like, for a master's program after graduating from university in ghana you really think they will value your degree your certificate from ghana more than nigerian degree you really think so they value a degree from ghana more than a nigerian degree ah haven't heard from the horse's mouth right a horse that has a large mouth to bully other people see you see this series it's going to be hard it's going to be different from what you know you know me for so but allow me to put up that personal because if you don't do like that you see how they have shut people down see these gorgeous women they used to make content about ghana but things have changed but on today's video i'm going to be rating ghanaian teachers as a nigerian and i believe um as parents i'm a as a mom now and my oldest is 17 and this brings me back to when i was in primary school i went to a primary school known as hd nursery and primary school it's in nigeria around a um, magulu area that was a primary school i went to and i think by the age of five i was kind of like aware of the differences in the teachers i had in my classes up until i completed my primary school education so i remember primary from primary one to about primary four i had separate teachers whom are like nigerian teachers and the way they would treat us like you know nigerian teachers not all of them but i'm speaking of when they, my experience of when i was a child in primary school and um, the way I was treated by Nigerian teachers between the between the classes of primary one and primary four is totally different. Like teachers will shout at you, they will raise their voice, and we all know in Nigeria, teachers they use kids, they scold like they spank children in schools. So being taught by Nigerian teachers from ages from classes one to primary four was totally different. And then I didn't say anything of it. I mean, by that age, I was about seven or eight years old. Then. I got into primary five and I had different set of teachers up until I finished um, primary six. Was it primary six or primary seven? I think primary six up until I finished primary six. So I remember I had um, a teacher in primary five. And as we all know in Nigeria, when you're in primary school, you only have one teacher in your class who will teach all of the subjects the entire day. That's how teachers teach in Nigeria. So when i was in primary five i had new set of teachers and they were all male so i had one they were twins male and i could just tell the difference in them when the teachers they will allow us time to go over what we've been taught i remember is it quantitative quantitative and aptitude or something i can't remember that in more like in the beginning of algebra and um, but it's in a form of quantitative and aptitude if i remember the name of that subject in primary school I will, I will put it somewhere here so they were quite very very good like they would teach us in class and they would go over this subject and they are so calm they are so patient which uh, teachers that taught me from primary one to four were never like that even male and female teachers they were never like that you can imagine an eight-year-old child knowing the difference between two sets of teachers that I've had. In fact, even then, I wouldn't have thought maybe this is a Ghana, Ghanaian teacher or maybe this is a Nigerian teacher. All I knew was that they are my teachers. But growing older and reflecting, I could just tell the difference between Nigerian teachers and Ghanaian teachers. And then I, in, when I was in primary school then, this was about maybe 1990-something, lots of Ghana teachers there were lots of them in Nigeria who would come. So I, when I was in primary five, I had male Ghanaian teachers. When I was in primary six, I had male Ghanaian teachers. And this particular one, his name is Mr. Mensa. I absolutely, absolutely adore and cherish that teacher. It was so good. Like my spelling skills today was down to the Ghanaian teachers, the Ghana teachers that taught me. Mr. Mensa taught me throughout my primary six. It was a very, very patient teacher. Very, very good. Like when he speaks English, the English is superb. It's smooth like butter. When I say it's smooth like butter, he speaks it 
clearly, efficiently. Don't get me wrong here. There's still a difference in accent in terms of how we pronounce words, but the way he speaks as a Ghanaian or as a Ghana teacher, it's just it's absolutely great. But the Nigerian teacher that taught me, they will use bass bows for you. Even their English is not even looking back now, the English is not even <laughs> It's not even funny morals like it's not even really encouraging i don't bl i don't blame why nowadays some rich parents in africa or in nigeria are taking their school their kids to schools that has all these british teachers and stuff like that like expensive schools where they know their, ch their children will, will communicate really well we are going to get to the part they talked about schooling in ghana and all that let's quickly address this she talked about her teacher now let's address this her issue of a Ghanaian teacher who taught her when she was young back in nigeria and what her review about the teacher see in why I'm, I'm going to link what she said here to the other lady that you know the other lady believes that suffering is a good thing that is a mindset of many nigerians they believe that you have to suffer mm -hmm. you have to suffer suffering is part of life is uh the it's like a religion like it is it's like a belief that have been made to be in the brain of almost every nigerian if not all that you have to suffer before you enjoy if you did not suffer you don't have to enjoy and in this suffering they end up rotting in some kids kids do not know anything the only thing that children learn is what we teach them so if you are teaching them that the best way to communicate is by beating is by hitting is by abuse is by bullying they have no choice but to learn and then they'll grow up that way a child is being bullied in school and when the child gets home his mother and father are there fighting each other or bullying him or her in the name of discipline you can see and then we end up raising what we have today that have become the issue why everybody has run away from nigeria including me <laughs> the people i'm displaying in this video some of the people in this video are not in nigeria and they haven't been to nigeria for a very long time i'm still going to play more okay yeah so these are the issues we teach our kids that bullying is the way of life and then they end up and they, they give it back to us and we are here lamenting they hate us our passport we do this because they don't know any other language than what they were being taught the other one is bragging i mean imagine you studying in that dilapidated structure does that make it a good thing for you to feel like the education sector in nigeria is better than that in of ghana i mean or what i mean like hold on let's take a look at this other woman and what she has to say about schooling in ghana hello everyone welcome and welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video so in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys the reasons why nigerians are moving to universities in ghana to study like a lot of nigerians have been going to ghana recently in fact of time now and if this is something that you want to hear then please do keep on watching so the first reason why a lot of nigerians are moving to ghana to study is that ghana educational system is amazing and one of the strongest reasons why people are actually living is that in nigeria when you get your when you finish your work okay before you can get admission into any university you need to go and write jam then when you pass your jam you also need to write post ume okay which is the university exam imagine you pass jam and you don't pass post ume you are not getting admission and after one year you need to go and rewrite jam and pass post ume so it's like the stress is sometimes people actually end up finishing school finishing secondary school and waiting three to four years before they gain admission into the university why unlike ghana when you finish your secondary school and you have your work as far as you have english mathematics and your elective courses i think like six or five credit courses correct me if i'm wrong you can get your admission no, there's no need for jam there's no need for post ume there's no need for all that okay so it's very fast and easy for people to actually finish their secondary school and gain admission into the university instead of wasting all those times and at the end of the day the times that some people were staying at home that one year two years three years your brain is actually cooling down to be honest there's nothing like you just finish your secondary school and boom you're in the university learning and all that but the distance and the delay can actually make some people begin to forget certain things i don't know but it's one of the reasons why people are moving to ghana because it's easy to just get your admission pass your 
um, YF get your admission and continue your education and before you say Jack, they are already done with school and they can move on with the next things in their life instead of waiting for Jam and waiting for YF. In fact, Jam has really jammed so many people. So many people have been frustrated by Jam in Nigeria, to be honest. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's not funny, to be honest. It's not funny at all. Um, this is one reason why people are actually relocating to Ghana to study in Ghanaian University. So the number two reason why people are relocating to Ghana University to study is that the language. We all know that the common language or the general language in Ghana is English. And you know that Nigeria also, our language is also English with our other, other different languages. But the major language is English. So it's a country where you don't need to start to learn new language on like going to Kotonou, going to this other Congo, or this other Nigeria, um, all these other uh, neighboring countries to Nigeria. But in Ghana, they speak English. So it's easy for you to actually communicate better. You don't need to start learning French. You don't need to start learning one other language before you can communicate with anybody. So this is one reason why a lot of people just consider Ghana because you don't need to learn new language. It's the same English, English. Okay, it's easy to just communicate and flow. So the third reason why people are going to Ghana to study is the cost of living is very, very affordable. You know, as a student, you don't want to, you know, the pocket money that your parents gave to you, you don't want to finish it in one day or one week. And at the end of the day, you are calling your parents for more money. So another reason why students are moving to Ghana University to study is that the lecturers are very, very relatable. They are approachable. You know, they teach you. They teach you. They don't just come to lecture and say, oh, today we are going to be doing this. Then give you assignments. Go and study yourself. No, they will lecture show you they will teach you everything that you need to know okay okay i understand that not all lecturers will actually teach you everything completely they will still give you assignment but to an extent they put in more effort you know to make you understand and they are approachable they are not they are like nigerian lecturers before you can talk to your lecturer you'll be shaking you'll be hey god the lecturers are like I don't know. I went to school in Nigeria, okay? So I know what I'm talking about. It's not something that you just wake up and go. There are some lectures when they are coming into the class. You better be your best behavior to avoid stories and touch, right? So, but in Ghana, it's not like they are not disciplined. They are disciplined, but the level, the, the way they, they are approachable. Let me just put it that way. They are really, really approachable. Students can come to them with their questions, with their everything, and they are ready and open to actually put you through. So another reason why people move to Ghana to study is that campus life in Ghana is peaceful. I remember when I was in school in Nigeria, I was in my 100 levels. There was this particular set of people that came to me and were like, ah, I am wearing their color. Why am I wearing their color? In fact, they almost beat me up, if not for the fact that I had people with me and they were like, no, I don't know. I mean, you, I'm a new person in the campus and all that. Like, that thing gave me phobia. For one week, I was so scared of going to school. And this is a true life story. I was so scared because the way they approached me was so, it was so intimidating. So, but this kind of a thing, you cannot find in Ghana University because they are very peaceful people. They don't have time. They are only to focus on what brought them to school. This one is so beautiful. See how pretty she is. Now, I just really realize that we have lots of nigerians that used to create content about ghana but where are they today they have all stopped and this is why we are suffering some of us are suffering because people tell us oh yeah people some people tell ghanaians oh nigerian youtubers are using you for the views because all of these ladies were doing amazingly well saying the truth all of a sudden they got jobs abroad they abandoned the ghana topic this is not the way to go anyways but for the ones that you have done i appreciate you and but some of them as a matter of fact do not stop creating content about ghana because they have an option now okay it is due to bullying from our people and, and also from some Ghanaians who don't trust them enough all right i faced that in the early days you know i needed to just continue to do my thing for some Ghanaians to embrace me and accept me and believe me it wasn't automatic okay but so but some of these people were dealing with being doubted by some Ghanaians and then also being bullied into silence by their own own people nigerians the reason you see nigerians can't come for me is because of they know where i come from right they know that my part of nigeria is the headquarter of witchcraft have you heard of witchcraft winches and wizards so they can't tell even me that is sitting here they can't tell if <laughs> you understand and this is one narrative about my people the Ogoja people that I am proud of and I don't want to change witchcraft. So you see them avoiding me like that because <laughs> it's just cost me to go to my village or call my village. 
Do you understand? So that is why they can't come for me. That is why I'm still standing tall. You see them bullying everyone into silence. So look at this beautiful woman and what she has to say about the education sector in Ghana. The only point I disagree with her is the cost of living. Living in Ghana is expensive and it has always been expensive more than Nigeria. But schooling in Ghana and having the peace of mind and studying like a human being, Ghana have it going and every other thing she stated is true apart from the cost of living right living in ghana is not for the faint-hearted it's expensive to live here to school here but come on we are still here even me that is complaining like cost of living i'm still here i can't go so you know what that means the land itself provides for you in any way just find a way to make sure you don't go to sleep hungry i don't know why ghana is like that and i appreciate her for that for being so kind to all our inhabitants so my dear nigerian um the spokesperson for your boys that is the other lady the one that i advised to go to the gym my dear you don't have to suffer so much in life for you to be successful it's a lie okay you and i we have suffered a lot in life where are we today we are on youtube doing youtube videos and especially you lying because you have to keep that to be able to keep you going we are supposed to be working with you and we're supposed to be working with top organizations mastercards apple but we are here doing youtube for me anyways for me i appreciate the fact that i'm doing youtube and i love it no one should misunderstand me but i feel like if i had the proper foundation in life laid for me i would have been working with un because come on like i can't do it i would have been working with a lot of this organization like international organizations because i should yeah but because of my upbringing the ss bully in the name of discipline in our schools we are bullied in our houses we are bullied in the name of discipline they end up rotting in us and at the end of the day what have you done with your life even the lady who said the one who says the nigerian certificate is better than that of ghana look at her like she was raised look at her she have ended up a bully being a bully dragging other people go to her channel and see celebrating nigerian music when you play those your videos i i feel like throwing up because see it's disgraceful to know that a country like nigeria the only thing you have to talk about is the music and the people the rich people you can't come up with a magnificent apart from you people's red line blue line purple line in lagos you can't come up with something that benefits the regular man you keep coming up with things that are in red events if i fall sick today and someone sing for me will i recover from that no i won't anyways so the points they made here is good see schooling in ghana and schooling in nigeria are not the same and they are never gonna be my niece is crying my niece is already in form three and i keep reminding her that she will soon be done with school the other day she was telling me she said mommy praise i will be done with school soon and please i don't want to go to nigeria i want to stay in ghana i'll get a job all you have to do is help me get a job because i already said i was going to sponsor her to go to uni in nigeria i can afford that if she's in nigeria but i can't afford it in ghana because it is expensive for me as an international student for her so but she's looking for ways not to go she would rather not go go to uni in nigeria she rather just get a job after senior high school in ghana it tells you something this is a child who was in government college one of the girls government colleges in nigeria oh uh, you understand now she's in a school in ghana now she has seen the difference so what are we saying you don't have to suffer so much yeah schooling in ghana is just the best it's amazing it's just like for me it's expensive it's not if not i would have loved to give my my nieces that and i want to use this opportunity to appeal with everyone anyone all of you if there are places i can apply for scholarship for my niece so i can start preparing ahead so that she can get into a school here or outside of here but not nigeria because she don't want to go to nigeria if you can help me out tell me how to go about it so i can see if i can get her scholarship but for me i cannot sponsor my niece's education in ghana i mean 
I cannot pay for her fees in Ghana because it's expensive above my means. If it is in Nigeria, I will continue to. I can. The school fees I'm paying for her senior high school in Ghana is enough to pay for a uni fees in Nigeria and even have change remaining. Do you get it? So you don't have to suffer so much to become great in life. And this is what my niece don't want to go through. She lives with me. She have her parents. Anytime I. I tell her, oh, we are supposed to visit Nigeria. She tells me, please, you guys should go and come. I don't want to go. She has her mother and father alive. They are young. She has her grandparents, both her grand maternal grandmother and her paternal grandmother. All her siblings, everybody is there. She's not missing them. She don't want to go. So it tells you something. You don't have to suffer so much. And then after suffering, you end up a bully just like you. Hmm? I mean, the lady that I advise to go to the gym. For me, I am a southerner. And if you follow me fight once, remember we are going to be fighting till you apologize or till, till the last days, till the end of the world. Like we, we keep fighting till our last day on earth. We continue to fight. So if you're having, if you ever have issues with me, it's either you apologize if you're at fault if I'm at fault, just tell me I'll apologize. Otherwise, anytime I feel like looking for content and I can't find any, I will come for you. <laughs> you understand? I'll come for you. That is because you're an old enemy. You see how very dark man they rule. We know they fight once. You fight, we go back, we fight again, we continue to fight until you behave. So this this beautiful women have cleared the hair that schooling in Ghana is just better than schooling in Nigeria. And the other lady talked about the justice system in Ghana. Why is the lie? Probriski is out there. Nigeria, if you don't have money, if you don't know people, if you don't know people in high places in Nigeria, you won't get justice. Ghana will give justice to the victims and not based on the fact that they are rich or they know people in high places. So the legal system is actually working much better in Ghana as compared to Nigeria. Imagine, for instance, let's say the parliament in ghana invites somebody to come and the man refused to come he instead he sent a lawyer can that happen in ghana but in nigeria it's happening they said they do not want homo people right my country is um, one of the most homophobic countries in the world right and but look at what, what's going on like they are protecting Bobriski. why can't we make it free if people want to indulge in it so that you all can in, so that these our top people can in, can do it openly and do it freely rather than do what they are doing because i don't get it probably is supposed to be in prison but he didn't go to prison he's out there because he said his godfather said he will never smell that prison he will never go there really he caught the judge a, a terrible judge for sentencing him so at this point you already get it ghana is better than nigeria when they toss a kama go catch me kama don't already catch me at some point in time i was attacked by some Ghanaians suddenly dislike me for, for whatever they have against me or have against nigerians and so you think whatever content i am you so you think i'm doing all this content that Ghanaians will love me forever no one day because i'm not from here i will go home i know you don't change their perception of me i mean nigerian is i am a nigerian you just like someone from some countries no matter how hard you try you try your best i will still be fearing you still they fear you this is like for me if you're married or having an affairs with a yaw boy i have this kind of fear towards you i feel like if you know what your man does for a living and you're comfortable with him then i don't trust you no matter how good of a person you present yourself to be so it's the same thing with me Ghanaians will never trust me 100 percent. so all these ones people are saying eh come i will catch up with you come i don't they catch me since and i don't understand so but while it lasts i'll continue to speak and the series is coming soon okay don't be in a hurry and i hope that you did enjoy this video and that i will see you in my next one to do